is that man is trying to take it over. It ain't working. But let me tell you one thing. I believe God, the Holy Spirit, and I know this pastor is hearing him very loud and very clear. You can tickle people's ears and fill the church. Mm -hmm. But that's man doing it. It's when God takes over and His will to be done, Amen. people have to change their lives. And we find out a lot of times people don't want to change. I told the church in Heartland here a few months ago, I said, I'm a man that don't believe in once saved, always saved. You better understand it. You can lose out with God. I said, I ask God forgiveness every day of my life. I said, we're not perfect yet. And we're not. No. But what the pastor was saying here today was very true. I think a couple of things he was saying, I said, now you keep on doing it, you will preach what I want to preach this morning. <laughs> I can stay here and sit down. I know what the Lord has spoken to my heart. Man, it's not our way no longer. So that's done. It is done in every church. And if your church, if the pastors don't want to do it, the churches ain't going to go no place. As far as spiritual, I'm talking. Right. It will go fleshly way, but not spiritual way. I am going to preach a while this morning on obedience is more than action. Some people have the action of obedience down path. They say the right things, they do the right things. But their heart is not right. Obedience is more than an action. It's an attitude or a way of life. Many Christians today who go to church every time the doors are open, read their Bible and pray, yet it is all seems to be avails little. Because, they're, because they themselves are short-circuiting the power of God in their lives through disobedience. Many Christians who think they are living in obedience to God's to God are really living lives their own way. Isaiah 55 and 89. For my thoughts is, is not your thoughts, neither my ways your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens is higher than the earth, so is my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. That's right. It's God's way, and only His way. We might as well understand that you're going to hear this pastor preach a lot of things that you might not like to hear, mm -hmm. but it's going to be from the Word of God and what God is saying to this church. And I mean, I believe there's other churches that's going to start doing it. We have a few churches that are already doing it, but very few. I believe when it all starts and everything else, you're going to see people come in. Who? Why? Because God's going to bring them in. He's, got to. He's the only one that can bring them in. The only thing that we have to do is show the love of God. We have to be there for people. But I believe, Pastor, every day we got to get down on our knees and ask God how, how He wants us to do it. I tell people, you don't tell people do's and don'ts, but you just tell them what Jesus Christ has done for you. Mm -hmm. 
Believers must understand that obedience truly is a walk, to walk in it. The first thing we need to realize about obedience is that it is a life, is a life principle. Obedience isn't just a, a singular act or even a series of actions. Obedience is the whole lifestyle, character, by the spirit of obedience. Jesus, our, Jesus is our example. Determine this attitude, a lifestyle of obedience. His entire reasoning for coming to this earth was capt captured in this statement. Lo, I come to do the will of God. Jesus didn't come to do his own will. He came to do the will of God. Now, Jesus is our example, so who are we here to do the will of? God. We are here to do the will of God, not our will. You can find that in Hebrews 10 and 9. The principle, the principle by which he lived his entire life was obedience. We as his body. Fulfilling his will upon this earth, we will have to live by this same principles. In fact, if we're going to accomplish anything in this life of God, for God, as spirit-led Word believing, words confessing, Bible talking, children of God. The number one principle we must live by his obedience. Yet it seems that when the word obedience is mentioned, some Christians get a long face. Actually, obedience should be the Christian's greater joy because God said, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Isaiah 1 and 19. Note that everyone is willing to end, to eat, the good of the land, right. but not everyone is willing to be obedient. Right. That's 100%. Yeah. Another thing we must recognize, realize is that in true obedience, they are elements of humility. An obedient person is also a humble person. Because he put the will on and desires of the one he serves above his own will and desires. There are many Christians who try, will try to prove you are... You, to you how humble they are. And through their many, many not saying it's in words, the attitude they portray is, I will show you just how humble I am. Hear what I'm saying? 
If you're an obedient person, you don't have to show anybody how humble you are. You will be humble. They will see it without you trying to show it to them. But that's not humble. That's not humility. We need to have the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Jesus emptied himself of his mighty glory and glory and power and looked on the and took on the form of a servant. Are we servants today? Do we serve the way that God wants us to? And how we should? Humbling himself to the point of death on a cross. <coughs> that is how literally humble and obedient he was. Philippians 2, 5, and 8. Let this, mind, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who brings in the form? Who okay, who be in the form of God's thought? It's not rob, not rob, rob to be equal to God, equal with God, but made himself no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being formed in that fashion as a man, he humbled himself and become obedient unto death, even the death of the, of, of the cross. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, become a servant. A man that knew no sin. He took a servant's role. Many people who do not want to be lo a lowly position of the servant. They want to be exalted, an exalted position and be recognized as important. But to have the mind of Christ is to have a humble a humility and obedience of a servant. Think about the word servant. A servant knows his role and position. A servant doesn't ask questions or argue about the command given to him. He knows he is there only to serve the one in charge. <coughs> Having an attitude of a servant is of vital importance to the body of Christ. Let me tell you, when I was brought in the ministry years ago, when Pastor Thomas McCarty brought me in, he didn't make me a preacher. I was a janitor. I made the bathroom shine. I did it the best that I could. And then he, I, God promoted me to, to be an elder. I was an elder for a quite a few years. But Pastor Thomas McCarty with the elder board, when he had a problem in the church, he used to say to us, I'm not telling you the problem. 
But you go to God and ask Him what the problem that we're having in this church. And He says next Sunday morning we will meet and you better all tell me what the problem is. And ask God how He wants to handle it. He never said how the pastor wanted to handle it. He said, e, I want you to tell me how God wants to handle it. Believe me, we had to find out. Because when we, that Sunday morning we went in, there was one, two, three, four. I was sitting there, and he was here. And he'd go right down, what did God tell you? 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 And if any one of us didn't give the right answer, he says, now all you go back and go before God until you hear from God. And I can remember, we all went and we give him the right answer. Then he sat back with a grin on his face and he says, now how did God want to handle it? And we told him what God told us. He said, okay, that's the way it is. One guy spoke up and said, Pastor, why did you, did you up? He said, I knew this before I even told you. But he says, we do it God's will here, not our will. And he says, when we do it God's way, it's done right. And that the problem was this. We stopped right there and then. And it was. When we become subject to God's God through the Lord Jesus Christ, God Himself lifts up, lifts us up and seats us with Christ. He has it, raised us up together and made us set together in heavenly places in Jesus Christ, Ephesians 2 and 6. Notice that in God's kingdom, humble, this humble obedience allowed us to rule with Jesus Christ. And with God. That is what attitude and, hum and humble will that is so important. So many Christians have the action of humble and obedience without the attitude of humble obedience. Our attitude is all important. Let me tell you one thing. When I walk into a church and the ushers are standing down back, it's very important to me how they look. The look on their faces. If they have a smile or have a frown. A lot of churches I go into, I sit in the back seat. Years, a few years ago, a guy asked me at that, that the church, he said, Brother Gardner, when you come here and preach, he says, why are you always sit in that back seat? I said, I have a view of what's going on, and God shows me what's going on. Because I will tell you, it's going to be the will, the will of God going on. But many times it's not. Some Christians are not receiving a return from their giving because the attitude with, with which they give is not right before God. 
It is in fact they are failing to give. It's that they are giving with the wrong attitude. Their attitude seems to be, to be God, I'm going to do I'm going to do this for you, so you owe me. God doesn't owe you anything. You owe God everything. Because you are nothing without him. Obedience is more than what some have thought. It is not just an act or series of actions or something that we do or do not. Obedience is a complete lifestyle. Hear what I'm saying, church? It's a complete lifestyle. Amen. Doing what God wants you to do. God don't have to do anything that we think he should do. <laughs> Amen. But we have to do what he wants us to do. Yes. It is an attitude of the heart by which to live. That means if you are holding any kind of grudge whatsoever against anyone, forgive them. You know that is a hard thing for people, Christians to do. I know Christians today they won't talk to somebody because they're holding bitterness against them. I was talking a few days ago to people. They said, but ruler, but ruler, you don't know what they did against me. And I said, no, and I don't. But I said, I know one does. And he's the one that says, you have to forgive them. What if I don't? I says, and he don't forgive you nothing. If you don't forgive them and you go into eternity, you will spend your life in hell because you're disobedient to this word. This word says we have to forgive one another. Mark 11, 25 and 26. And then ye stand praying, forgiving, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. It's very clear what God's Word says. But I hate to say, and I ain't going to the Baptist ranks, I'm not going to the Methodist ranks, I'm going to the Pentecostal ranks. There's a lot of Pentecostal Christians today don't believe they have to forgive one another. But God's word says you do. Behold, because holding a grudge or unforgiveness in your heart towards anyone becomes disobedience to God. Walking in the love of God is an important part of obedience to God. 
John 13, 34 and 35. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also have, also love one another. By this, by this, all shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love for one another. When you are in the line, when you are in line with God's word, and you are obeying Him on daily basis, then it, the, the good thing of God will be able to come to you in abundantly. Luke six and thirty-eight. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaped, shaken together, and running over all men, giving unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured unto you again. The whole of God's plan is based upon serving God in obedience to His will. Not to our will, but to His will. Let me tell you, church, whatever this word says, we have to do it. Don't matter if you want to or not. Obedience to His will, not our own will. We talk a lot about serving God, but are we really servants? A servant will do what his master tells him to do. When, when we see Jesus' attitude, of serving others, we begin to realize that until we are willing to obey, to be willing and obedient to be a good servant as Jesus was, there is no way we can eat of the good land. Yes, we can sing about who we are in Christ Jesus. Yes, we can sing about being kings and priests unto God. Yes, we can sing about being adopted into the family of God. Yes, we can sing about being seated in heavenly places with Jesus Christ. We can pray and make our confessions about who we are in Christ and what we have as our kingdom rights. But until we are willing to be a servant, just like our elder brother, we will not be in completely obedient with God. I'm talking about our spiritual attitude as well as our actions. Yes, in Christ we are someone. Yes, in Christ we are rulers. We rule and reign as king and priest. But we also must realize that we are still a servant of the Most High. Amen. We will never become so important as 
as to be a servant. Jesus never stopped serving, and neither should we. Hear what I'm saying, church, this morning? We should always do the will of God. Mm -hmm. And if we are doing the will of God, we will serve one another. Hear what I'm saying? We don't hate the sinner. We love them. We hate the sin they do. Right. And that's what Jesus Christ did when he was on this earth and does today. So, as I say here today, it's God's will, not ours. And the pastor I know in this church is going to be saying that. Why? Because he's listening to the man, his boss. Mm -hmm. And if we all listen to our boss, this church will grow. And it will grow because God's going to make it grow. He wants a church that is obedience to his word and doing what he wants them to do. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, brother.